what's the best way to save money? Blanket statement, new graduate, 6.8% is average student loans. I've got 130 grand in student loans left. I think the average up time, which is probably over 200 grand, is the best thing to pay off student loans first, and then what's next? Wait, 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 let me jump in first, and then I'll let Adam right. go, because I said to Adam earlier that, that when we get onto this about how do you save money and, and for the future, that's gonna be all his. But I just have to tell you something about sure. student loans. The IRS allows a $2,500 deduction as an adjustment to your income, meaning that you don't have to itemize your deductions to take this, for student loan interest. But if your income is between $60,000 and $80,000 as a single individual, that $2,500 gets phased out to zero. If you're married, it's between $130,000 and $160,000. It gets phased out to zero. So you said you're in debt for $130,000. Not talking about your income, but if you're making less than $60,000 a year to pay off $130,000 debt, you're in more trouble than you think. Deduction. And, and, and the $2,500 deduction doesn't mean anything to you anyway. It's a little silly, that deduction. I'd never qualify for it. Right. Yeah, no, and, and that's exactly it. it, you know, it it's the same, the same rule of, oh, well, I'm not going to pay off my mortgage because I want the tax deduction. The, the, you don't let the tax tail wag the financial planning dog. That, that's just I not like how that. it works. You've got good analogies. You know, I, uh, I've, I've always subscribed by the notion that people are doing the best they can with what they know. Um, and my job is to take the information that I know and distill it down in a way that you'll be able to understand. Analogies. So, right? Metaphors, analogy, exactly. So what do I do? Give me, no, actually you're not giving me advice. Blanket advice, 200 grand in student loans, 6.8% average. You know, what are we thinking about? Reconsolidate or consolidating loans? Should I do a Roth IRA or the, what, where should our mind be? Other than talking to you and looking at this as a very unique snowflake situation, because that's what it is. Okay, so, so third time I'll use it, it depends. Okay. Um, that's it. <laughs> it's three, three, that's all I'm allowed. That, that, now you've got to give advice right, I'll, for I'll free. start saying it depends, yeah, right? Okay. <laughs> um, I say it because it, it, there's, there's a couple reasons why I say that. The, I can sum up what you need to do in one word. It's easy, but it's not simple. A budget. It's a budget. You take, just as a good business owner is going to calculate how much they expect to make, their expenses, net income. In your case, your income minus your expenses, you have fixed and variable expenses, right? Fixed expenses are going to be your rent or mortgage payment, your student loan debt, all those things that you can't that you can't manipulate. You have your variable expenses, which are your entertainment, your vacation, you know, uh, the, the, the discretionaries, if you will. Lattes. And, lattes. Yeah. Or, or I'm even, not gonna go into the example of how much you could save if you skip that latte three days a week, that 535 chai skinny vanilla latte. Is that your drink, by the way? No, just. Um, but, but, yeah, but, I wouldn't go that either. <laughs> but even renting or leasing a car, you don't need a Ferrari, you can do with a Honda. Yeah. Yep. Guys, uh, you are making me depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, and, and I it's said, interesting. well, I mean, so, so we came out, my, my wife graduated $243,000 in student loan debt. Our, our student loan payment for her is still more than our mortgage payment. And it will be as we continue to pay down that debt. So I, I, I can empathize incredibly with every young OD out there that has student loan debt. Because again, you have two finite resources, you have time and money. It comes down to two things, in my opinion, as far as how to allocate that. Your priorities and your emotional capacity to withhandle debt. So that's a kind of a cliche phrase. So let me talk about those two. So your, your priorities, what, this kind of comes back to what I said in the very beginning, qualitatively and quantitatively, set your goals for what you want to accomplish. So if you want to do all these things, pay off debt, have a family, buy a car, buy a house, if you could only accomplish one, what's that? Then if you can only accomplish two, what's that? Three, until you, in essence, run out of money. You didn't get into debt overnight, you're not gonna get out of debt overnight. The bed that you made took you a long time to make and the return on that investment, let's not kid anybody ourselves either. The future of optometry has never been brighter and it'll continue to grow as we continue to have an aging population. With the involvement of the medical model and the transition of private practice away from retail and into medical and more disease and, 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 and management of care rather than just selling, I say just you know, facetiously uh, in, in a dispensary way, you have an incredible amount of potential as a profession and as and as as medical professionals to do well things. So don't don't think about your debt as a burden. Think of it as an investment in yourself, but one that does need to be that, that does need to be paid off in a responsible way. It does come down to a balance of 
what I meant, what the second part that I meant of, of how you feel about debt, like your emotional capacity around debt, I call it the pillow factor. I can't build this into a financial equation. How much peace of mind do you need when you lay your pillow, when you lay your head down on your pillow at night to know where your money is? I have some clients that are completely comfortable with keeping their student loans around for 25 years. Not my personal preference, but, but they're at peace with it. I have other clients that, like I said, are not buying a house. They're still driving around a 15-year-old car, and they're taking um, uh, 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 an advisor friend of mine coined this phrase, stack and save, or uh, um, stack, starve, and save. So they're basically taking in a dual-income household, they're living off of the lower incomes household, throwing everything that they can of that higher income, basically 100% of that higher income towards student loan debt. and facetiously starving, right? They're living like no one else, so later they can live like no one else, but they'll be debt free in four and a half years, paying off over 250,000 in student loan debt. You have to have that conversation with yourself. And again, not to put another plug in for advisors, but I will anyway, this is where a trained and trusted, prof trusted professional can help guide you through that conversation. And, and that's why Adam started the conversation with, it depends. Because everybody's situation is different. Everybody's mindset is different. and. I'll say it like I said it before about it's not a tax decision, it's an economic decision. You have to see, figure out how is it that I want to live for the next X amount of years to get the debt paid off. I'll walk you guys through what my mentality looked like on it so you can get a, get a glimpse of it. And then I, we have to wrap it up, I think, because we've got all sorts of stuff planned. For me, I started with my goals, where I wanted to end up. Those are very, 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 very ambitious goals. So I am in, uh, and I know I'll get there. I'm very You're confident. You're well on your way, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm very confident in those. So for me, paying off student loans early and saving very early wasn't at the top of my list, right? First thing I did upon graduating was making sure I had at least six months in an emergency account so that if you know what hit the fan, I've got the cash to be able to have that. And that's something I maintain year round. The next important thing was making sure that I had enough cash in the bank to be able to put back into our businesses should we need that cash. Thankfully, we haven't, although here and there, I'll be able to have some extra money as an investment. But having that money there to ensure the businesses was, business was stable in a pinch was another really important thing. From there, I actually ended up reconsolidating some student loans, and uh, there was actually some a new law passed. I forgot what it was, but I was able to get a better interest rate on loans. And then I started, um, from there, being able to budget with cash flow. Okay, now I could put $1,000 a month towards my loans. And you know what? Right around this time, when I get this type of payment from the company, I'm going to put 10 grand towards it. And then so, and then it's back to it. I, I, I had this idea of where I'm going to end up down the line, very confident in it, willing to take the risk. I have a very high risk tolerance for my own ideas. Most entrepreneurs do. But I have no risk tolerance for investing in the stock market because I'm not good at that and I can't sleep at night, but I can sleep fine at night investing in myself. So everyone's plan is going to look different. Everyone's, you know, uh, goals are going to look different. And so that's important. And I think that's where you guys come in as you look at the human element of things. It's not just numbers. It's also the way people work. Uh, unfortunately, part of the CPA curriculum is not taking psychology courses. Ah, interesting. Uh, and, and just as a, as a closing comment or a addition to what Matt said, have an emergency fund. Uh, six months is a great number. If you're in a dual income household, I as an advisor, I look at clients, if you have at on a very, very low end, two months of your living expenses, I like to see somewhere from three to four. If you're single, you don't have another household, that five to six months of cash in the bank, your credit limit is not an emergency fund. Your home equity line of credit is not an emergency fund. It's cash in the bank is a good emergency fund. You have to start there. You don't want to build a financial plan house of cards.